Okay, so today we are talking about the new Land Rover Defender. Anyone who's looked into buying one of these has probably been faced with the most ridiculous amount of variations of model, trim levels, engine types and option packs and actually choosing which is the right Defender for you can be quite a confusing and daunting task. So today I'm going to try and help navigate you through some of those choices you'll have to make, you know, whether you're buying and specking up a brand new one or whether you're looking to buy one on the second hand marketplace. Hopefully this video will give you some useful tips and point you in the right direction. Okay, so the first main choice you're gonna to wanna to make is choosing between the 90 and the 110. So the short wheelbase or the long wheelbase, three doors or five doors. And really, this is gonna come down to practicality and the style and what, real, what really suits your lifestyle and your needs the best. Um, so we'll start off by looking at the 110. Um, the 110 actually came out first and it received amazing reviews. It won loads of Car of the Year awards. Um, but look, let's face it, it is a big car. Um, that has its advantages, that has some disadvantages. Um, I would say it's a more stable car on the road. Um, it's definitely got a slightly better ride than the 90. That's helped in some part by the fact it has electronic air suspension as standard on the 110. It is an option on the 90. You know, I'd stop short of saying it's anything like a, a Rolls-Royce Cullinan with that magic carpet ride, but it is good nonetheless. Of course, one of the big benefits of the 110 is having those five doors and the added practicality that that gives you. So if you've got kids going in the back or anyone going in the back, it's just so much more convenient being able to have those extra doors to get in and out of. With the 110, you also get an option to have third row of seating, so two more seats right in the back. Um, so it really does just add, you can get more passengers and just more stuff in the 110. But if you are going to use your Defender as more of an urban vehicle, driving in the city, in and out of traffic, the 90 is definitely going to be a better choice. It's just more agile, it's a lighter car, it's slightly faster, and it's just more, just more manageable and easier to live with just because of that smaller size. I'd also go as far to say I think it has the edge on looks, maybe that's a personal taste to personal preference but I just think it's a little bit more chic a little bit cooler although I have to say in this spec the 110 does look amazing the other thing with the 90 I would say is when you're going off-roading it's a slightly better car in some ways because it's just easier with that smaller size to snake around get in between the, the trees and around the boulders so yeah the 90 has definitely got an edge in some ways but look if you've got a family if you've got more than two or three passengers. The 110 is a more practical car. If you've already got an SUV, and this is more of an additional car, something to have a bit of fun with, um, something to maybe go off-roading, maybe the 90 is the better choice. Okay, so once you've chosen your wheelbase, the next thing you're probably going to want to choose is whether you're using your Defender for commercial use or just private use. Because that's going to make an impact whether you just choose a regular Defender like these three, we can get something called the hardtop version. The hardtop version is actually classified as a commercial vehicle. Um, that basically means if you're running it for business purposes, you can claim back the VAT. So it makes the car 20% cheaper. Obviously the target market for the hardtop is corporations, businesses, organizations, and you know, they have got a very strong following, especially in the construction industry, um, farming industry, even the telecoms industry, anything really that, you know, has all that need for like cargo in the back, because what the hardtop's all about is it strips out all the back seats and just gives you this massive load area in the back so you can shove all sorts of stuff in it. It's got lashing points to hold down the cargo. It's got a full fixed height partition between the, the seats in the front. And in the 110, you've also got an underfloor lockable storage section, which is pretty cool. Um, the other best thing about the hardtop is basically instead of the rear windows, you have this whole canvas here. So you can put all your sign writing so you can get your business logo, your contact details. Let's face it, you're gonna rather drive around in a Land Rover Defender than one of these sort of normal just vans or transit. It's just a much better image for your brand. But look, 
If you want passengers in the back, you're gonna have to go with the regular Defender like these. Okay, so next up, you're gonna to wanna to choose the actual model of Defender. And this is where it can start to get a little bit confusing. Uh, so when the Defender first got released, there were three different types. You could get just the regular Defender, pretty much the base model. Um, you could get the first edition, which was a limited run for the first few cars, which had a, a bunch of things included as part of it. Um, or you could choose the X, which is the very top of the range. That's what these two green cars have, which just comes fully loaded with options and extras all included. Um, in 2021 for the model year, they brought out this new model called the X Dynamic. It was actually a halfway house model, which sits in between the X and the regular Defender. Um, they're also going to bring out a couple more special editions later this year for the 2022 model year. They've got a V8 version coming out. They've also got something called the XS edition and also something called the V8 Carpathian edition. Um, but yeah, not to be confused with the actual trim level. So this is where it gets a bit confusing because they classified those as models, but then they also have trim levels like the S, the SE and the HSE. Combine that with the fact there's all different types of engines you can get for these cars. Then you think all the different option packs and the options, there are just so many variations of Defender you can get. It's gonna be far too tedious for me to go through each individual one, but let me try and just show you some of the differences. Okay, so we're now sat in the black Defender, the regular Defender. Um, so the actual entry level price point for the Defender is about 45,000 pounds, slightly less for the 90, slightly more for the 110. That's obviously before you add any option packs, any extras, um, but you still do actually get quite a few standard features. So you get LED headlights, you get heated seats, you get 3D surround cameras, and as I mentioned before, on the 110, you also get electronic air suspension, uh, but that is actually just the start. So if you did pick the regular Defender or the mid-range X-Dynamic, you'd now have to decide what trim level you want. You get to choose between something called the S, the SE, and the HSE. If you did originally pick the X model, you've already got the highest spec level, so you don't get to partake in this bit. Um, but when it comes to the S, the SE, and the HSE, it's really largely gonna come down to how much you wanna spend. Um, so the SE is about 4,000 pounds extra, and the HSE is another 4,500 pounds on top of that. Really, it, it determines what style of wheels you get and the level of equipment inside, of lighting options, different technology, and some of the materials. I don't think it's gonna make a massive difference. This car, is an SE. I think it's a nice balance. It's sort of mid-range, doesn't mean the cost gets too high, but you get nice things like Meridian sound system, upgraded alloys, you get heated memory seats. If you do go for the HSE, one of the big things is you get the panoramic roof. Uh, you get a bunch of other things as well. But in my opinion, if you're going to go with the HSE and then you start thinking, oh, I want that as well, this as well, you're better off just going with the X. They do say, go big or go home. So one thing I do find a little bit mind boggling is Land Rover bringing out this X Dynamic model, this sort of halfway house model that I've mentioned. Firstly, because of its name, with all other Land Rover models, when they add the word dynamic onto the model, normally it's been upgraded in some way, whereas with the Defender, it's been reversed. So the X is the higher spec car and the X Dynamic is the lower spec car. Um, and all it really is, is cosmetic upgrades. It's satin styling effects, it's an upgraded interior. You know, 7,000 pounds, I think, on the 90 and about 10,000 pounds on the 110. But I don't know why they didn't just make it a pack in some way. Um, the other silly thing about it is that if you choose the X Dynamic thinking, okay, I've got the upgraded version, and then you pick the S trim or the SE trim, you actually end up with a lower spec car than if you just went for the regular Defender model and got the HSE pack. So they, Land Rover really do make it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. Okay, so we're now sitting in the 90, in the green 90, which is the X variant. So the X actually costs about 35,000 pounds more than just the base model Defender. And for it, you just get absolutely everything. You get your panoramic roof, loads of tech features, ventilated seats, which on a hot day like today is pretty useful. Um, extended lever throughout, it really does feel levels above the black Defender I was just sitting in. Um, but really, 
the X is about turning what's a pretty rugged and rustic interior into a place of comfort and luxury. Okay, so now we're gonna complicate things just a little bit more because there are numerous different engine choices. This is gonna be one of the biggest decisions you'll be faced with when choosing your new Defender. Essentially, you're gonna be choosing between petrol, diesel, and hybrid, but then you're also gonna to have to choose just how much power you want. It is worth mentioning which engine you choose also determines which spec level and trim level you're allowed to take. So if you do go for the X uh, trim level, you have to get one of the more powerful engines and vice versa if you go for a very low end diesel entry level engine you are not allowed to get the x or even the hse pack so originally the defender was actually launched with this which was a two liter four cylinder diesel engine land rover have actually done away with this engine altogether and replaced it with a three liter six cylinder turbocharged mild hybrid engine which they believe provides a little bit more torque and smoother delivery of power. Um, what I would say is this four cylinder engine, it is lighter than the six cylinder and it does provide better fuel economy. So if fuel consumption is one of your highest priorities, this four cylinder two liter diesel does remain an excellent choice. So if you do wanna order a brand new diesel Defender today, you have to go with the three liter diesel engine. There are a few options with power. So you get the D200, which is the entry level, D250 and D300. All those numbers are relating to power. So the D300 has 300 brake horsepower, um, which gives you just a little bit more acceleration and power. Um, but look, diesel, it's gonna make some sense for a lot of buyers out there. It does make the car a little bit more utilitarian, which does fit the character and history of the Defender. Um, but look, many of us just don't want diesel these days, so at least there are some good alternatives. Right, so if you want to go petrol, there are a couple of options. Um, so you can get firstly the P300, that's a two litre four cylinder engine. Um, it is a little bit quiet, but maybe that suits some people. But if you want a little bit more oomph behind the wheel, you're going to want to go with this engine on both of these cars. It's the P400, it's a three litre engine, six cylinder, twin turbocharged, and it has the mild hybrid, which actually gives it better fuel consumption than the P300. It sounds a little bit better, I think it's just a more refined engine um, and it's going to appeal to the drivers a little bit more. Also, if you're towing, just having that extra power does help quite a bit. But if you really want the ultimate and are not really worried about fuel costs, then there, there's going to be this V8 version which will come out later, I think this year, um, and that is really going to appeal to the petrol heads and those that really enjoy the performance. Okay, so the final option and perhaps the most interesting option is the P400E, a plug-in hybrid, none of this mild hybrid stuff, um, but essentially it's the two liter four cylinder engine from the P300 and then combining that with an electric motor. So you actually get 27 miles of pure electric only. So obviously great fuel economy. I think they claim of over 85 miles a gallon. Um, but one of the other big benefits is the, the reduction in tax. So if you run a hybrid through your company, uh, you get reduced benefit in kinds tax, which makes the car quite a lot cheaper to run. Um, another benefit is you get no congestion charge in London. That is actually set to change in October though, because they're gonna make it pure electric only for free congestion charge. But look, all in all, the P400E definitely makes a lot of financial sense. You just have to bear in mind, you will have to plug it in to get that electric power, and that can always be a little bit of a faff. Okay, so just to summarize, when choosing between these engines, what I would say is you just gotta look how you think you're gonna use your Defender. If you are gonna do lots of short journeys, not much motorway miles, and you really actually wanna enjoy the performance performance, I would go with the petrol engine. If you're going to do quite a lot of city driving, you're going to be stuck in traffic, it's going to probably make sense to go with the hybrid. It's better for the environment. You also get the flexibility with the hybrid of still using the petrol engine for longer journeys. But if you are doing a lot of motorway miles, higher speeds, the diesel is going to end up being the most efficient engine for you. Okay, so another important decision you're gonna to have to make is choosing how many seats you want in your Defender. 
Um, so as standard in both the 110 and the 90, you get five seats as standard. That's assuming you don't go with the hard top version where all the back seats have been stripped out. As you can see on the 90, with all five seats up, you don't get a load of luggage space here, but you can put those seats down, which creates a nice amount of luggage space. Um, over on the 110, you'll notice with the bigger length of the car, you get a lot more space for luggage in the back. And then the other thing, if you do go for that third row seating, is you get these extra two seats. Personally, I think with the seven seat option, you just, it becomes a more versatile car because at the end of the day, you can just lay them back down and you still have all that luggage space. And then when you do have extra people, they can just squeeze in. Um, so I think it's a better option to have. One other thing to mention on the seats is you can actually turn the 90 into a six seater and the 110 into an eight seater by specking the optional jump seat, which basically is an extra seat that goes in the front, it replaces the center console and you can have three people up front. Personally, I think for resale, more people are gonna to prefer to have the center console. Um, so it might not be the best thing to choose unless you really need that extra seat. But it definitely is quite fun for the kids to ride up front in the middle and especially if you go for the hardtop version where there's only two seats in the front, that third seat is gonna be pretty handy. And so all the final choices you're gonna to have to make are all the different packs and options to really personalize your Defender. And there's some pretty cool things you can do. Obviously choose the color. This is Pangea Green. You'll notice the 110 has got that matte effect. That's because it has satin paint protection film all around the car. Um, but the packs I really wanted to mention were the accessory packs. So there's one called the Explorer pack, which gives you uh, the Expedition roof rack, which does look pretty cool. Not so easy getting into underground car parks though. You get this deployable ladder. Again, I think that looks pretty cool. Um, there's other things you can get as well. You get this little side carrier, which is quite good for dog stuff. Um, there's also another pack called the Adventurer pack, which is more for off-roading. You get all sorts of things, air compressors, you get a portable rinse, so you can actually wash down the car, wash down your bikes, your boots, whatever you need to do. And all of these packs, I think, really make a Defender what it is meant to be. It really adds to the character. There's also the Country pack. That's a slightly toned down version of the Adventure pack. And then on the 90, they do something called an Urban pack, uh, which is a few accessories just to toughen the car up, just to make it ready for that concrete jungle um, but look there's lots of different options again you can choose i would recommend just going through the configurator having a look at all the different things and how much they cost and just seeing what works for you okay so there you have it hopefully that is going to be pretty useful for anyone looking to buy a defender Please do bear us in mind if you're looking to buy one or even if you're looking to sell one, we're actively buying and selling these Defenders. Um, so do give us a call. Our, all our details are in the description below. Give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content. Make sure you have subscribed to our channel and we will see you again very soon.